Hi, we're here at the Global India Business Meeting 2014 in Liverpool and the sentiment has been very upbeat about the new government. Everything, everybody's looking extremely positive and willing to give the government the best benefit of the doubt. And I'm very happy to welcome a very eminent group of guests today where we want to speak about capital reform. Um, here is Ashish Chohan, who's the Managing Director and CEO of the Bombay Stack Exchange. This gentleman in the middle, almost, is uh, Sanjay Kureja, the Managing Director of Chris Capital, and the gentleman on the very right is uh, Amit Dev Mechta, who is the Senior Vice President of Tata Capital. To just enter this uh, discussion very broadly is, after the new government is in place, where do you expect the biggest hotspots where capital reform should take in place and whoever likes to start? The first and foremost is in terms of getting the approvals done for the project so that uh, the capital can actually start flowing because uh, if you don't have the projects moving, then the capital uh, sort of formation becomes difficult. But in terms of making uh, the capital formation easier, I think some steps have already been taken in terms of uh, getting the, the foreign portfolio investment regulations in place so that uh, earlier, uh, for almost 22 years in India, if you were a foreigner and a person of foreign origin, if you are to invest in India, it would be basically you will have to invest through something called FII. Uh, foreign institutional investor from June 1 this year onwards, that's a few days back. Uh, basically, you can uh, invest as a, a normal individual also, uh, and that, that is basically a, a huge change uh, going forward. So, there are uh, many such changes. Uh, in fact, the top uh, 200 companies have been allowed to uh, come with uh, the, the offer for sale, let's follow, off, uh, follow on offers uh, through the exchange uh, automated mechanism, which gets the companies. Uh, two days, uh, the money in two days and the stocks in people's uh, depository accounts in two days. So there are many mm -hmm. changes that have already been put uh, food and I think uh, going forward there is many more mm -hmm. uh, we can expect uh, in, in the capital market itself. From your perspective, do you see those areas, do you see other areas that you would like to add? Yes, so I would say that look, you know, um, the capital markets in India uh, by and large have been shut for the last two years and there have been very few IPOs. Uh, lots of, uh, if you look from a private equity uh, lens, in India over the last six or seven years, you've had about 60, 70 billion dollars of private equity capital flow in, and very few exits. Um, largely, exits have not been to strategic uh, outposts, but actually companies going public. And since that market has been shut for the last two to three years, um, the industry has been going through a very tough time. But is so that, I think, is, yeah. is it a matter, if I just uh, may ask a follow-up question, is it a matter of market that doesn't work or is it a policy issue where markets can be deregulated to facilitate more IPOs? Uh, absolutely. So I think the machinery of capital actually flowing in, in, into in India from an investment perspective also needs to improve dramatically, right? If you look at sort of gross, gross cap capital formation or actually increase in capex uh, of India Incorporated, which was running at about 20-25% uh, growth per year in the last few years is actually stalled to sing low single digits. And that needs to change. Uh, a lot of that will happen uh, through capital markets flowing more efficiently. Mm -hmm. A lot can be done towards that. You know, I think uh, ability to do follow-on raises, as he was pointing out, ability to actually go list. There are lots of, if you look at the liquidity statistics, mm -hmm. the market liquidity is all restricted to the top 100 stocks. Whereas we have you know, over you know, three, 4,000 stocks that are listed in India. So the, there's a long tail of companies that actually don't get followed, etc. So there is less, lots of inefficiency in the system that can actually be corrected. Mm -hmm. And I do expect the new government, as well as, uh, you know, if you look over the next decade, uh, there will be a series of uh, reforms that actually need to be uh, mm -hmm. taken to make this government, this capital markets much more efficient. Mm -hmm. I tend to agree with that view. I think the most important thing in capital markets uh, is confidence. And one of the things that has started well for the new government is that he has made the the prime minister has made the right announcements. So if there's a intention and there's a will, first that is the most important thing that you get confidence back in the market. That has been very evident. If you see the retail investor, for instance, has disappeared from the market in the last few years. They prefer to buy gold mm -hmm. rather than come into the market. And a lot of broad changes need to be made. How are pension systems working in India? What is the actual return people get? What is the protection that investors get? And that's in, in, in terms of more transparency. So there's a very long list of things to do. 
but we've started in the right way and getting confidence is the, the first thing and uh, once approvals come through I think the other very important thing is we only talk about equity capital markets I think the formation of the debt capital markets is a very important aspect as well that uh, does need to um, you know be reflected and generally financial systems you know how do we reduce the risk premium of India perceived risk premium the real risk premium these facts are known to the government I think there are enough papers that have been written on these things it's a question of actually getting things done now so it's early days but I think we're on the right Right. If I summarize what you all three said, it's like a mix of confidence building measures that are paramount to bring confidence investors back. Yeah. The second is like uh, also a mix of domestic measures and those that are outward looking. So do you see that India can't be looked at in isolation to reform the capital market, but it always has to have also a component that is attractive to foreign and uh, investors abroad? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, India needs to grow at say 9-10% to justify its potential and also provide jobs to the, the unemployed. I mean, we are getting almost a million uh, youngsters into the job market every month. And so effectively India needs to attract as much capital as possible from within India. India saves quite a lot, around 35% of its uh, GDP, yeah. but it's still not sufficient. Uh, and so whatever it can attract from abroad, uh, it should attract and ensure that uh, it, that capital which is coming from within India or abroad is able to uh, get the right returns uh, and so effectively India has always almost last 20-25 years has looked up to um, attracting foreign capital uh, as much as anything else. I mean things like you know if you look at the savings that uh, Ashish was referring to you know 30-35% of GDP but it's all going as he was pointing out in areas such as gold etc and bank deposit for 60% of all childlike savings so we are not really uh, able to get attract that into either equity or debt. Mm -hmm. Which are the two biggest you know, productive uses of capital? Of and savings. why is this? So is this a cultural thing, it's, a traditional thing? It's it's a cultural thing, but it's also a confidence thing. It's also a situation of you know last ten years or last seven years returns being very muted. Mm -hmm. If you look at you know Korea as it went through its transformation process, a lot of the pension money actually was uh, allowed to invest in equities that created a you know large market uh, for uh, investments in local investments, lo local pool of capital that could actually go and fund projects. Uh, in India's case, that has not been the case. LIC is a little bit, uh, but as pension markets reform and you get you know more uh, insurance money as well as pension money coming into equities uh, plus debt can actually give, be a very long-term viable source of funding because you know uh, foreign capital can be an additional factor but cannot be the sole factor. You need you need a balance of both factors mm -hmm. to actually play in and, and actually develop the capital markets uh, in a, in a, to work to function in an efficient manner. Mm -hmm. So I think you need a combination of both, mm -hmm. and I think there can be measures, uh, regulatory measures on both sides, uh, mm -hmm. you know, allowing more equity participation, more more debt participation, and domestic side as well as being more facilitated towards mm -hmm. foreign capital that can make it much more efficient. I mean, to what extent do you think does the regulation need to be reduced to have those restricted sectors abolished or the share, the maximum share reduced as a factor to increase foreign direct investment into India? See, foreign direct, as we keep saying, foreign direct investment is a function of having very clear idea that we have a policy, the policy is stable, you know, and that policy will be executed. Mm -hmm. So if we have that sort of thing, you know, then foreign direct investment will come in because ultimately uh, it's about confidence in people putting their money, I'm going to get a decent return on my money. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, these are reforms. Uh, government needs to focus on the on the key issues of governance. It shouldn't be in the business of running businesses. India needs to liberalize within itself. Uh, you know, we are very hung up on foreign capital and you know foreign investment. It is necessary, but the the large savings which has already been referred to is already there. That needs to be used more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Savers, you know, today we are very fortunate that we have a young country. But still, how our savings are, you know, uh, will be ready for us when we need it. Uh, they need to compound. They need to return for our investors, and that's how you get people saving and investing in the right way. Um, if you have these things, these fundamentals in place, so I think government should, you know, reduce uh, public sector businesses. Let the internal market in India, even if it's run by Indians. Uh, thrive on its own mm -hmm. and that's just by good solid policies. Uh, 
need to be done. So I see here is a consensus what needs to be done next. So far, how I pursue the Indian politics, this is also the consensus of the new government. Still, this is the last question and my request for a short answer. Do you see still obstacles in the way that might hinder those reforms that you also brought to the table now? Um, there will be obstacles, uh, undoubtedly, you know, in execution of any plan. Uh, but I think the Prime Minister has indicated he is here for the long haul um, and you know he is solutions driven. So I think we will see quite a few changes that uh, you know people are hungry for change, you know they feel frustrated. Mm -hmm. So um, I think you know these are uh, you know it's the early days but we, we are hopeful that um, you know that uh, I mean if you people wouldn't have given such a big mandate, you know, in the past we've, uh, few months, we've had quite a lot of, uh, you know, uh, support for new parties uh, on an anti-corruption agenda. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the process of reform has started and, um, uh, you know, uh, we have to wait and see, really. Um, there's clear, I think there's clear hope, a clear mandate. Uh, first time in 30 years we have such a strong mm -hmm. mandate. I think it comes with high expectations. The jury's out there. In mm -hmm. India, we've always have this way of going mm -hmm. two steps forward, one step backward. Hopefully, this mm -hmm. time will be different. But mm -hmm. as a as a private equity person, we're trained to be skeptical. Mm -hmm. I think it's not that we're going to run into regulated industries mm -hmm. to invest in day one. I think we're still going to stay invested in certain areas which are mm -hmm. free from government and hope for the best. Actually, so the jury is out. Who is the jury? Is it the public in general? Is it the business community, the financial community that would then one year ahead look and say this worked out and something was brought on the way, or it's still stuck? No, all of them put together. I think the society is made up of many interests and not, and not only the business interests because many times many of us may think that ultimately the governments and the society should work for the interests of the business but then uh, the society has different interests and so they tend to have even political frameworks uh, change uh, for a period but I think today all the vectors seem to have aligned uh, in the positive direction that all of them want to do the same thing that is reduce corruption, reduce obstacles to investments, create more jobs and I think whether it's private equity, whether it's private capital, whether it's a private sector and public sector, all of them seem to be aligned to the same uh, motivation. So I think it's a it's a wonderful time to be uh, investing in India and I'm sure uh, if ob obstacles come, they would be finding uh, practical uh, solutions to that. Excellent. So gentlemen, thank you very much. We all hope that the measures that you propose will be brought on the way to get the India growth uh, engine starting in the right direction. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.